Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Untitled Reviews. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are dramas. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about The Bear, Season 3, Episode 8. Great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So we're immediately picking up where the last episode left off with Natalie uh, entering late. Well, her water broke, so she's trying to, like call everyone and she can't get in contact with a single person she's trying to pull over because she's on the far left of the highway so uh and she's just trying to move over move over move over and just she's panicking understandably it's just sad that like this moment she kind of had to ultimately end up having being alone because like, obviously pete's coming in from where he was but he won't he's not there in time and like i said she can't get in contact with anyone not carmy not richie not sydney it's like her her like foundation like because everyone's there for her but obviously in this moment because as we know everyone puts their phones in their lockers when they're there so it's like i don't know if they did that initially or not or whether that's just like a new mandate that carmy put in and that kind of screwed everything up you think you'd probably want to keep your phone on on lock considering that is like super super prego like she's about ready to pop like she is now so she pulls over and the moment she's just stopping she's breathing i'm like Okay, I was like, who's the one? I was like, there's only one person you're going to be able to call. And she says it, call mom. I was like, I knew it. And so when she shows up at the hospital, Donna's there being like doing a he, he, who, who. And I just love that she's like, stop it. That doesn't work. I'm calm. I'm not calm, mom. She's like, no, you're calm. You're calm. And so this is everything that, this is everything that Natalie doesn't want nor need in this moment. But you, you got to give Donna like some benefit of she is trying her best. She's trying to be there for her. And I just love Natalie being like, Mom, shut the fuck up. And But she doesn't stop. She just keeps going. It's like, I mean, that's kind of Donna for you in a nutshell. I, but I also, once again, I talked about it with with the uh, Tina episode, which was episode six. I just love these one-off episodes. Like one, like focusing uh, one person episode. I mean, for one, 90% of this episode takes place in like one single location. It's just the hospital room that Natalie and Donna are in. Because at least even the Brazado house, like you're going to different rooms throughout the house, come back to the kitchen, so on and so forth, where everyone's scattered throughout the house type of thing. So it's one single location that you're just like seeing from different rooms and stuff like that. So, but it's like, yeah, like the episode is mainly entirely Donna and Natalie. I say like 95% of the episode revolves around them. So, but I love that Donna's kind of got that thing that my dad has where like, it's something I always talk about my dad where my dad will talk to anyone about any and everything. That's, that's who he is. I'm not that type of person. I'm a very like socially anxious person. In my family. I'm the most socially awkward person in my family like the rest of my family are social i know if i think i get some of my like weirdness about social interactions from my mom because she can be like that but even she's way more social than i am but it's like yeah like, she, like in that moment donna was kind of giving me my dad's energy on like i kind of i've always had that like growing up always that feeling of like geez dad stop talking like not everyone wants to hear everything you're saying but that, that's my dad he'll he'll tell stories and uh, not necessarily allegories, but it's just like that's just my, my dad's willing to talk to everyone. He's just a friendly dude like that. So Donna was definitely reminding me of my dad in that moment. So obviously my dad's a lot more chill than Donna is by by a country mile. But uh, yeah, she was kind of talking about like right, oh like back in my day, you didn't really know the doctor's name and stuff like that. And I love the entire time that's almost like mom, calm down. It's mom, stop, stop talking. It's just it's like I just I love the whole situation and. Um, Especially later on when Natalie was talking about she was going to have a natural birth and that she wasn't going to take an epidural and stuff like, well, because at first Donna was laughing about the whole natural birth thing. It's like, no, 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 go ahead. And she was like, not the epidural. And just like, no, no, you, you want that. She's like, trust me, I've been through it like three times. She's like, I know, mom, you haven't shut up about it for the past four hours talking about it. So, I, you know, it's like, yeah, you're going to need that epidural because it's going to be painful. But she, I get it. She wants a natural birth. She thinks it's going to be better to be able to like, I want to have control of my body. I want to be able to turn and move. I also want to be in a situation where you know, she kind of wants to feel it. Because she's like, yeah, I, how, how will I know how much I can handle? And I love that Donna tries to play kid. I'm like, no, sure, sure thing, honey. Whatever you want. Whatever you think is right. And you can tell that annoys Natalie a little bit. It's like, okay, you're just like, you're just kind of being, and she even says the words, you're being passive. She's like, no, 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 I'm not. But it is, 
I won't lie to you. The entire episode, I was nervous. I was like, is Donna about to go full Donna here? Because I think that's what's so beautiful about this episode, too. Like, this is our first time seeing Donna present day. Yes, the Brazado Christmas that was a whole clusterfuck of a situation in season two was only five years ago. It's not that much of a time, but it's still enough time because a lot has happened in those five years. For one, this is like our first time seeing Donna and Natalie on screen interact. They, I mean, for what we've seen, Natalie's been avoiding her mom like crazy, but she has talked to her mom. Once again, it's been on her phone. Cause we don't know what their relationship has been like post that dinner because that dinner was very traumatic and we kind of resurface a lot of that trauma and all that Natalie's been carrying with her when it comes to motherhood and being a daughter, all that in this episode. But a, a key thing to also consider too is this is our first time seeing Donna post losing Michael. You know, so that that's kind of an interesting, especially when she tells the story about like all three of her kids and the pregnancy and everything. She was like, uh, with Michael, like she was, uh, I forgot. Oh yeah, she had like walked to the hospital. She was grabbing onto every stop light and parking meter. And she was like, the moment she got there, she's like, give me the drugs. Give me, the, I need the drugs, give them to me. And then Michael came into the world and it's it's you, the sadness she talks about it because it's like it's the thinking about like right the, your firstborn coming into this world and now thinking about your firstborn not being there and it's like i'm sure i'm sure there's a lot that she's already going through thought thought about a process but it's it's that thing of how everyone reacts when they think about michael you know it's like you know how Carmi says he likes to think about michael we saw richie thinking about him last episode because him and net were talking about mikey so it's just it's so fascinating when you like, see that pain on her like it's like right she's a mother who lost her child and i think especially because everything that she's been through um it's kind of like what could i have done differently i wasn't always the best mother i wish i was i'm trying to be here for nat to make up for the years that i wasn't the best mom i've been kind of not great and even at one point she had asked nat she was like why what did you you have something you want to say i think i know what it is why didn't you why you didn't tell me uh why you didn't tell me you were pregnant why you didn't like want me to know but then it's also like Tell, but am I am I right about what I'm thinking? And Nat never really confirms in that moment. But later on, it's like her mom's like, you were wanted to tell me something, but you just won't say it. And she's like, the thing I want to say is, and no, it was actually Donna who figured it out saying, you don't want me here, right? And she's like, it's because I, it's because I don't want all that you bring with you. It's a lot. And she's like, and Donna's like, I get it, I get it. I'm trying to work on it. And it's like, oh, how is that working? And she's like, I'm, I'm learning how to deal with myself. And it's like, how is it working? She's like, it's not easy. Which is, I mean, like, once again, the entire cast of characters has been doing that. But just sticking with the Brazado family and family associated. Once again, we see Nat doing that. We see Carmi doing that. We see Richie doing that. Like, but, but specifically amongst the Brazados directly. It's like, that's the thing that Nat and Carmi have kind of been struggling with the most. Because this episode emphasizes the most, too, that out of any of them, like, just like everyone in the family has their unhealthy way of dealing with things, so does Nat. Nat's over, like, her her uh, unhealthy way of dealing with things has kind of been her empathy because she kind of wears her heart on her shoulder more than, uh, wear her heart on her sleeves and more than any member of her family does. She's always been that way. And she even talks about it. She was like, I always, she's like, I always had this feeling like everyone around me doesn't like me or hates me because I'm always asking, are they okay? Which is obviously, that's a trigger point uh, because Nat would ask over and over again in episode six, and that's when shit finally popped off. But it's like, that's always been Nat. And she talks about like, when someone's sick, she starts feeling sick. And it's just like, she's, it, the whole situation makes her not feel good about herself. It makes her feel ugly. And she's like, oh yeah, mom, I always put you first. And she's like, oh, that's sweet. She's like, no, mom. She's like, that's all kinds of fucked up. That is always the thing that does seem like she does put She's like, I bend over backwards. I go out of my way to make sure you're happy, which is obviously a hard pill for Donna to swallow, but she's also taking it with stride because she recognizes like, right, I I recognize how messed up I've been. Because once again, it's been this thing of like, she's questioning what kind of mom she's going to be because she's like, like, she's like, I don't want to scare my child. And Donna's like, I scared you. And Nat was like super brutally honest of, you scared all of us. It feels like, who knows? This might be the first full, like, fully honest conversation Donna and Natalie have, in, at least in the confines of the show, but, like, it just feels so raw and 
unfiltered in a lot of ways. Like Natalie's like always kind of just, she's always had to bite her tongue. It's like, I'm gonna make sure you're okay, mom. I'm always gonna put your well-being first, even though it should be the other way around. It's like a parent should take care of the child. But it's like, once again, she always had to, it's, I've talked about it before where it's like Natalie and other people have talked about this when it comes to the show that Natalie basically makes herself small. Like a lot of who she is, like her bigger personality, how she could tell Carmen, go fuck yourself. You know, like a lot of that kind of like withers away. But we do see like the way she talked with her mom in episode six, Fishes, last step, last season versus her literally telling her mom, shut the fuck up. That Natalie did not have that energy at all because her like she was so small in front of her mom, but now she's not. She, I mean, you know, maybe it's the hormones kicking in, but it is her being a little bit more honest about everything. So I thought that was so interesting. But it's like right, she doesn't want the the situation to kind of like the trauma, the familiar, the generational trauma to continue. It's like right, what she had to deal with with her relationship with her mom. She's worried and scared that she's going to do the same thing. But it's like I don't want. I don't want to scare my child. I want to make sure my child's okay. I want to be okay. I want to be good. And her mom's telling her, it's like, no, you're going to be okay. Because I think for Donna, it's like, despite everything, you aren't me. You know, you're in a better position than me. You're better off than me. Um, so I'm not worried. It doesn't sound, Donna doesn't say that, but I feel like you can kind of potentially infer some element just like, but it's like, because there's so much not spoken in those moments where like, Donna is just holding her hand and tears and like her eyes are welling and there's a sadness there. Um, there's even this line I thought was so interesting where uh, Donna had said, because uh, Natalie was like, what was like, what was your, what was your mom like? Because she was like, I don't really remember her. And uh, what was it? Donna says, you don't want to, which I'm like, that's all we get, which I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? I mean, you can heavily infer like, oh, so Donna's like, you think I'm bad? You're like, so it seems like Donna's stuff might not just, because we don't know enough about Donna and the Brazados in general, enough to know how long has Donna dealt with this? Was it after, as we found out this season, their dad bailed on them. So it's like, was it after he left? Has she always dealt with it in some level, but maybe the family kind of kept her equilibrium? Like she found, had a balance to it, but the moment their father bailed, like that all went one way. She was a single mom. She had people around her, but I think it's just at, kind of inferring from that, like she had a, a fucked up relationship with her, her mom and even her telling that it's a good thing you didn't really know her, which I'm like, that's, that's. I mean, I'm sure it's a blessing, but it's kind of sad that, like, Donna feels that way. So it's like, what was her relationship with, like, her mom? Was it the exact same way with Natalie? Once again, that generational trauma of, like, history repeating itself. We also learned some interesting stuff. We also found out, like, Jimmy, it's, it, this isn't his first marriage. Uh, at, at bare minimum, it's his second marriage because um, his uh, first wife was there uh, during Carmi's uh, No, no, no. She was there for Natalie's birth. Because she had told the story about um, Carmi's birth. And it's like her dad, uh, their dad was there. But he was annoying. They were getting into fights and stuff. So. It does almost seem very reflective of like how all three kids came into this world under the different circumstances. That she kind of was alone when she gave birth. Like, you know, struggled. Like, came here by herself to... Uh, bring Michael into this world her and her her and their father were fighting when she gave birth to Carmi um whereas with uh with Natalie she had no idea where he was but she had this beautiful dream about this tank of fishes because she was like yeah I was home alone but then she was like yeah I was working in the city at the time so I don't know if, like she had passed out woke up in the hospital it kind of seemed like she was like because she said like oh I made my way to the hospital when I opened my eyes so it's like yeah she was back home again like you know and she was uh sleeping but she had a dream about like the fish tank she's like I'm the only one seeing it and then it was kind of splitting apart but she was so happy about staring at it because she's like it's so beautiful and this will force other people nearby to look at the fishes and obviously that represented her water breaking in real life so and then she's like went there uh was with um Jimmy's first wife and eventually they played her um Jimmy's first wife played a song and Natalie came into the world and it's like oh what song was it and then she pulls it up and plays it and it's so beautiful because that song represents what Donna told Pete in the season two finale she doesn't know how to apologize which is something that um 
She doesn't know how to say sorry, um, which is uh, something that Carmi has a hard time with, which literally the next episode is called, I think, Apologies, I think is what it's called, I saw. Either way, that's kind of here or there, but thematically uh, perfect, kind of thematic, but it's also like, she doesn't know how to say I love you. Like, she, once again, it, like, talking about her feelings, Nat's, like I said, um, to some extent, because it, she's not even really good at talking about her own feelings. It was a more so, she, she kind of is, like I said, she has her heart on her sleeve, like, but it's like, she more so, it's, it's empathetic to so many other people. She's kind of feeling their feelings rather than always being fully honest about what she's feeling sometimes. But... Even Donna mouthing the words to the song, it's like, it's everything she wishes she could say to Natalie, but doesn't always, isn't able to say, isn't able to kind of express her feelings or express her love. So it feels like so thematically perfect for her to be like this to be the song and also her mouthing the words to Natalie. It's like everything she can't bring herself to say sometimes. I do love that it's like, it's a little bit of comedy, but it's a very like serious, like, like I said, very like open dialogue to some extent that like Donna and natalie have like getting her the ice chips kind of also doing the beautiful thing of like oh let me cool my hands a little bit put them on your head to help you feel okay finally doing the hee hee hoo hoo like calm down everything's gonna be okay you don't need to keep looking at the monitor everything's gonna be okay but also look at the monitor now so i can show you like right everything's good you're okay your baby's gonna be okay you you know so but also like when she was rubbing natalie's back and I started start noticing, th I noticed that at first, I was like, oh, that's weird. Seems like you're going too low on her back. I was like, that's uncomfortable. But then she's whispering, she's like, oh, like, uh, I'm, I'm feeling your ass. And it's like, you got your dad's ass. And she's like, mom, what the fuck? I was like, I couldn't help but bust out laughing too. Because I was like, that's so awkward. But she's like, yeah, you're, you're, you got your dad's ass. I mean, your dad had nice ass. And then when her mom had left the room, she was like, I've, dad's ass jesus christ i was like that's such a it broke the tension in a room but it was also like that's no one wants their mom caressing their ass it's like jesus i've kind of had a, it's not the same thing but i've had my mom point out the fact that i have no ass i'm 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 as i am as flat as a board you might as well call me plank from ed ed and eddie uh but yeah i've had my mom point out the fact that i have a lack of ass so you know it it feels like that's a weird thing that moms do, you know. Um, so it, it, it kind of, once again, gave me a little bit of that same energy or whatever, so. But like I said, it's just this beautiful, like, time between Donna and, and Natalie. And it's, like I said, it's just being them, just in this one room. Because um, Nat was also, like, eventually... Shush Joe to be like, yeah, I want the, the thing that will induce labor. And I also want like the epidural to deal with the pain. Cause like she heard like some other person screaming. It's like, I think I want the epidural. And her mom's like, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Cause she's like five or six centimeters, uh, uh, dilated. I don't know enough about pregnancy. Doesn't, isn't the number supposed to be like double that for childbirth? I think that's cause she was like, how long is it going to take? And he's like, oh, it's going to take as long as it takes. Because Carmi ended up being the long... It took a long time. She was like, I was in labor for a very long time. It was painful as shit. Um, but... I want, Like I said, I want to say it's like 10 or 11 centimeters. Like, if, if I'm completely wrong, do let me know. Like like I said, I... Uh, I don't... I haven't had any experiences uh, with pregnancy in my personal life. And sex ed was a very long time ago. Well, my health classes was my freshman year of high school. So... I don't remember those numbers, but I feel like it's, ain't it like, like I said, I feel like it's gotta be double that. Like, I swear it's like 10 or 11 centimeters. It's kind of like, okay, now we can get in the process, but maybe it's not even that much, or maybe it's more. I don't know. Uh, either way. I was curious if we were going to get Pete this episode, but lo and behold, he shows up at the very, very end. He got there in time, but the moment he shows up, you see Donna kind of exiting the room because it's like, right, I, I, well, because usually only like one or two people are allowed in the room at the time. So I'm sure Donna was like, right, Pete's here. And it's like him being here is better for Nat in so many ways, more ways than me being here. So she's in the hallway and Pete comes out and it's just kind of like, hey, thanks for being here, Donna. And he's all and he says that line, which is almost the repeat of season two finale of what do I do? And she's like, you just go in there, you stand by her side. And I thought that was beautiful. And her going into the lobby later on, just walking away. Cause like I said, there's only supposed to be so many people in there. It's like, right. Pete should be in there and not me. 
And lo and behold, who shows up? Wasn't even Carmi and them. It is, it's fact one and fact two. I mean, they're not fact one and fact two, but in, in the confines of the show, as we know them, you know, it's Neil and Ted. And I, I love them kind of sitting down with her. It's like, yeah, the phones were off and everyone's here. Well, uh, you know, eventually everyone's going to find out. But, you know, her leaning on Neil and having Ted's hand and they're talking about the fact is you're a grandma now. And she's like, oh, stop. It's like, yeah, but you're, you're a grandmother now. So... And it's just kind of beautiful because I also appreciate that Donna wasn't alone in that moment. She had like them by her side too. I think that that felt beautiful too. That it just it just it was a like once again despite all the realness of things coming out, it was still like like I said, I legitimately freaked out, worried that like Donna was going to pull a Donna, but she didn't because she is working on herself. It's not easy, but she proved. Because once again, we also haven't seen the progress she's made. It must not be a lot. Considering the fact is Natalie was still worried in recently about like Donna being pulling a Donna. So for that, you know, it was kind of implied. All right. I feel so stupid. I'm so stupid. I'm so stupid. Ignore me. I'm up here talking about the season two finale. But I'm like, I'm so stupid because I'm like, right, we saw Donna present day and that was the season two finale. I, I'm i not going to cut that out from earlier. Someone will probably mention it in the comments down below. Oh, you idiot. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. I mentioned it here at the end, but I'm not going to like go back and cut that out. It is, it is what it is. But it's just like, it's been the first time she's talked about Mikey present day. Because I was making it sound like this was the first time we've seen Donna present. It's like, no, we saw her in the season two finale. Even though I kept referencing, yeah, even though I thought about it, I actually mentioned it multiple times throughout this, but it still never correlated in my head until now where I was like, wait, we have seen Donna present day. Uh, I mean, I think there's also that parallel too of like, right, she didn't want to, because her whole thing was she didn't want to ruin anything. But I think she, once again, not always being able to express how she feels, she was able to, and she was able to kind of make things better because she was there for Natalie when no one else was. Despite like, hey, I think I'm kind of messed up and I probably would have made things bad for Natalie. I recognize that. I understand why Natalie feels that way, but you were there to help her through this. She, and it, and it, it was beneficial, and I think it's going to be an important thing going forward with your relationship, so... Like I said, I think it was just kind of like this nice inverse of where she kind of had to walk away, that it's okay to walk away, but she was here for Natalie. And like I said, by the end of the episode, she's not even alone because she has both uh, Neil and Ted by her side too. So I just thought that was just beautiful all around. Just a beautiful episode all around. I'm really curious to ultimately see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I wanted to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.